For me, hockey was life. If I did good, I was happy. If I didn't, I was miserable. I lived and breathed by what the hockey world said about me. I grew up in Michigan originally and I uh, started playing hockey at a young age and I uh, grew up a little bit in the Catholic Church, but quite honestly, we never really went to church. I didn't have a Bible growing up. Uh, for me, I played hockey and hockey was everything to me. It was my worth. It was my value, it was my significance. Uh, if I did good, uh, I felt like I was somebody. If I didn't, I, I felt like I was a nobody. And so I rode this total roller coaster of chasing the opinions of people and chasing performance. And for much of my life, you know, I, uh, that was who I was. I was a hockey player. That was my identity. And uh, at 16, I moved away from home. I lived in Canada. Uh, and then from there, I went to Iowa and started chasing, uh, chasing my hockey dream of playing in the NHL. And uh, it took me multiple different places. I ended up at Miami University uh, playing college hockey for the Miami University Red Hawks. And while I was there, uh, we, we had an incredible blessing to, to play in a couple different NCAA tournaments. I went to two Frozen Fours. I got to play in a national championship game. Uh, well, the crazy thing was, uh, for me, in my, at the end of my sophomore year, uh, hockey got taken from me. And for a guy whose worth and value is tied to where you stand in the depth chart and what your coach and your teammates think about you, uh, it was like I became a total zero. And, and it ripped my heart out of me. And for the first time in my life, I fell on my knees and I wholeheartedly asked God for help. You see, I had gone to church when I was a kid, but I didn't really have any kind of relationship with Jesus. I didn't even really understand who he was. I just believed in God. And so that day I fell on my knees. I wholeheartedly asked God for help. And I had a peace come over me unlike anything I'd ever felt in my life. And uh, uh, down this road of starting to, to learn that I was more, there was more to life than hockey. And um, God put some special people in my life to help me understand that. Well, uh, about eight months after I had prayed that prayer, I got invited to Athletes in Action. And they told me all about Jesus, how he died on a cross and how he rose from the grave and how we can be forgiven and made new. And on that day in Psychology Room 125 in March 2009, I, I gave my life to Christ I will never forget that day I felt overwhelmed by the love and the grace of Jesus because I had lived a crazy life chasing the opinions of people and the approval of others and doing just wild and crazy things um, outside of hockey trying to impress people and chasing performance and chasing the approval of uh, of my friends in the hockey world uh, but thankfully God grabbed my life and that day it changed everything. My life turned upside down and I became a Christian and started following Jesus and, and it started a whole new road for me because I started to understand that there was more to life than hockey. I was more of a man than a hockey player and Jesus began teaching me that I, I was not defined by my performance and what other people thought about me. I was a child of the living God. I was forgiven. I was completely new. My heart of stone had become a heart of flesh and my blind eyes got to see. And I was given eternal life. I was, I was given a security for Jesus says that this is the will of my Father, that anyone who beholds the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life. And I myself will raise Him up on that last day. You see, I, I was overwhelmed by the love and the grace of Jesus. Uh, he made me new. The old creation was gone and I became a new creation. I was forgiven. I was justified by faith. I became part of the royal priesthood of the holy nation and the chosen race. Jesus grabbed my life. And that was an unchanging, eternal name and identity that literally nothing could ever change. No, no, uh, no opinion of someone else, uh, nothing, no performance, no bad practice, no bad game, uh, no, nothing changing in my hockey world ever had an impact on who I was in Christ. And so I went from, from being a, a, a hockey player that just kind of believed in God to a Christian who happened to play hockey. Changed my life, radically changed my life. And so for you, you know, I don't know where you're at in your life uh, and what you're going through. You might not be an athlete. Uh, you might be an athlete like I am uh, or was. And uh, uh, for you, Jesus, he gives us a name. He gives us an identity that we are not defined by what this world says. You see, the world defines us by everything on the outside, by the clothes that we wear, the status that we have, uh, what people say about us, how good or bad we do at our grades or at our sport or what our stat line is, what scholarship we get or what school we go to or uh, how good we do in certain areas of our life. Uh, we are utterly and completely defined in the world's eyes by what we do and by what other people say. 
But that's not who Jesus says we are. We are not defined by what this world says. Jesus does not look on the outward, outward appearance. In fact, in 1 Samuel 16, 7, it says that he looks on the heart. See, Jesus defines us. He defines us. The creator of the universe gives us a God-given name and a God-given identity that is unchanging. He says we are deeply loved. He says we are totally accepted. He says we are completely forgiven. We are significant. We are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. We are completely secure in him. For like I said, this is my father's will that I lose none of that which has been given to me, Jesus says. And so we're forgiven. He's given us a purpose. You see, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are witnesses for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so as Christians, because we know who we are, we know what to do. We get this incredible blessing and privilege to take all the gifts that God has given us and to go and impact lives and share the love of Jesus with this world because we don't live for ourselves. We live for him who died and rose again on our behalf. And so identity is huge, and it was a massive part of my life. I am no longer defined by what this world says. I am who God declares me to be. And for you, you might not be a Christian. You might not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, but today can be your day. You see, Jesus came, the Son of God, literally took on flesh, and he dwelt among us, and he died on this cross, bearing the sin of the world, because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And because we've sinned to the core of, the very core of who we are, because we've sinned, we, we, we are indebted to God. We have a debt to pay, but Jesus came. The perfect, sinless Son of God came, took on flesh, and then he stood in our place and paid the very debt we are to pay. And when he died and that blood was shed on him, literally it was like the wrath of the Father was getting poured out upon Jesus. And his blood literally paid the debt of all of mankind and all of our, all of our sins. So he says if anyone confesses him as Lord and anyone believes in their heart that he was raised from the grave, they will be saved. You see, if you confess Jesus as Lord of your life, where he's on the throne of your life and you surrender completely to him, and then you believe in your heart that he was raised from the grave, you'll be saved. You will be given a new name, a new identity. You will become a child of the living God, forgiven and washed clean and made new. You will be completely, completely changed from the inside out, and you will be with Jesus for eternity, forever. It's not by works. It's by faith. It's by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord of your life, you surrender to him, and you believe in your heart that he was raised from the grave, you can be saved. We all can. And that's what happened to me. That's what happened to me in Psychology Room 125 in March 2009. God radically changed my life. And I pray that today, you, whether you're a Christian and you just need to be encouraged that you are, uh, you are not defined by this world, you're defined by who Jesus declares you to be, or whether you're not, you haven't started walking with Jesus, today's your day. Confess Jesus as Lord of your life. Believe in your heart that he was raised from the grave because he died for all of us. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that anyone who would believe in him shall not die, but shall have eternal life.